Hey guys, it's Law again, here to give you just a real quick Photoshop tutorial to help you have some fun and make some stuff for your own home games that you can just print out on a regular printer. Today we're just going to take a minute to show you how to make your own dungeon tiles, just like generic looking cool stone squared out tiles that you can use to cut into whatever hallways and things like that that you want, or lay them out side by side to make a big old room. It's going to be pretty straightforward. So we're just going to make an 8 inch by 10 inch file, because most printers are going to be 8.5 by 11. So that's going to give us just a little bit of a window and give us a nice even amount of inches to work with. And we're just going to call this stone tiles. I've got it at 300 resolution. That's pretty solid. Um, so we've got our 300 resolution file. And the first thing that we're going to do is make a grid on top of it. So the first thing we want to make sure we have is that the uh, snap to grid is turned on. It is, and we're going to show the grid. And what I've done is using my preferences under guides, grid, slices, and count, you want to make sure that you have it set to have a one inch guideline with one subdivision. And that just means that our grid is going to be one inch by one inch. So this right here is to scale at one inch one by one inch. Um, so how we're going to turn these into visible lines on the actual file is we're going to grab a little selection tool. We're going to set it to fixed size. Um, we know that this file is 8 inches across. And we know that uh, 10 inches is probably going to be good for a kind of thick line. So all I have to do is click and it'll automatically fill in uh, wherever that is. We're going to put this on a new layer because our background layer starts out as locked. And all we're going to do is just fill in that tiny little narrow line that we've made with uh, black. So now we've got ourselves a nice black line. And anytime we click this, it's going to create another line just like that. Um, and again, as is with most things that I want to show you guys, there's a, a bunch of ways to do this. This is just what I'm doing, and I think it works pretty good. Feel free to tell me otherwise, but honestly, <laughs> it's pretty straightforward. Uh, I like in Photoshop that there's so many different ways to approach things. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to duplicate this line. And since we have snapping on, it's automatically going to clip to that one inch line that we made on our grid. Um, and we can just keep duplicating this layer and doing that all the way down. So as you can see, we have our lines going all the way down with a nice 10 inch pixel wide line um, to give it a little bit of girth. And we're just going to flatten all these together so they're all on the same layer. And then we're going to duplicate that layer. Uh, and we're going to rotate it 90 degrees. So we've already got our other line starting to form here. We're just going to drag it up to the top. And it's not going to change any of our ratios if we just scale it to fit to the bottom. And then we flatten those together. We're uh, not going to need to look at the grid anymore. And we're not going to need to snap to the grid anymore. So we can turn that off. doesn't need to go off because the grid is not currently visible. But as you can see, we've got one inch squares with a nice black line. That part's pretty easy. And they're flattened together on the same layer. So we're going to turn that off. Um, as last time, I found a nice little stone texture that I'm a fan of. Um, this one's not perfectly seamless, but I think it'll be good for some dungeon tiles. So we're just going to drag that over onto the field. Um, we're going to zoom in on this a little bit because I'm going to show you how to fill this in as a pattern. So what we're going to do is we're going to basically select this space where, the, where this block is. But we're not going to go all the way to the edge because if we accidentally select any of the white on the border, that's going to show up in the pattern. So I'm just going to leave it in just a tiny bit. So what we're going to do is define pattern on this selected shape. And we're going to call it Stone Floor. You can name it whatever you want, obviously. That's no business of mine. Um, and we can turn that layer off. We're done with it. We're going to zoom back out. And now we're going to create a nice blank layer. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to Layer, um, New Fill Layer, and Pattern. Um, we can call this Stone Floor Fill. And we're going to select uh, that stone texture. Uh, and as you can see, like I said, it's not seamless. So we're going to actually scale it up a little bit just so it has a little more... Uh, not so many obvious patterns, basically. That's fine with me. Uh, I'm pretty cool with that. So we're going to take that file 
and move it down to the bottom of the layers and then flatten it with our background because we don't want it to be that object mode anymore. Not really important. Um, and we can get rid of our old stone layer. So now we have black lines on a nice stone grid. But we don't want it to look like black lines. We want it to actually look like nice divisions in the stone. So what we're going to do is we are going to select the black line that we created on the layer with the black line. So we've selected the space that is the black lines. And now we are on our stone tile layer and we can hide the, uh, the black lines themselves. We don't actually need them. We just wanted them to exist uh, so we could use them for our own purposes. And what we're going to do is basically now what we're selecting is the space where the black line would be of the stone tile we've created. Uh, so what we're going to do is copy this layer. And as you can see now what we've created is just a grid of the stone texture. And that is good. We're going to zoom in so we can get it a, a good view of what's going on here when we do this. But we're going to select that layer we just made with the, the stone lines as they were. Um, we're going to go for bevel and emboss. We want it to be an inner bevel uh, with a sharp chisel and a downward direction. And as you can see here, it's starting to look like uh, floor tiles. So we can modify the size and the depth as we so wish. It doesn't need too much. Um, they're already looking fairly, fairly deep. Um, stands out pretty good. That looks nice to me. And we're also going to turn the brightness down on this layer just a little bit so all of the grooves inside of the stone tiles just have a little bit more darkness to them. But they're still going to show that nice, that nice bevel. And really, that's all there is to it. Um, you can print this out on 8.5 by 11 paper. You can cut it along the lines to make your own hallways. Or you can lay out a couple of them side by side to have like a 16 by 10 or four of them to have a 16 by 20, which can be a pretty good sized map, especially if you're, you know, not able to go out and buy some nice vinyl maps or whatever and you just need to make a temporary dungeon. You can cut circles out of it and do whatever. Uh, and as one last little thing to look at, we're going to add a pattern to the floor just for fun. Um, so what I'm going to do is I found this nice looking compass rose. Uh, we're going to select all of the white and then we're going to select the inverse. And that should give us just the compass part, and we're going to drag that over here. Uh, this is if you wanted to have like a temple or something that has some cool stuff on the floor. And this is by no means a perfect selection or anything. There's probably going to be a little bit of shoddy white along the outside. In fact, there is. And one way to help with that is if you just select the space around whatever it is you're highlighting. Uh, modify and expand. I'm just going to go... I think 8 pixels should be good. And we're just going to cut it off. And again, it's going to make the outside line a little little bit choppy in places, but it's going to look like it's painted, so that's kind of what we're going for. Um, and we're going to move this to be underneath the grid, and all we're going to do is just turn the opacity down a little bit at a time. Um, so it looks like it's sort of faded into the floor. And we can also adjust the brightness and contrast, like we can make it a little bit darker. And if we look at the color balance, this floor has a lot of like deep grays and a little bit of green and blue, so if we kind of modify those colors a little bit, uh, we might get it to look more like it belongs on that floor. That looks pretty good to me. Um, so if you want to add some cool little details to your stone tiles, things on the floor, texture patterns, you know, you could do blood smears, or huge cracks, divots. You could carve holes into it if you want to have creatures come out of them. Um, and that's just one way to do it. And I think it's pretty straightforward and real easy. And I had fun doing it. I hope you had fun watching me do it. And if you guys have any questions, you can always contact us. Uh, admin at slapdashstudios.com Especially if you have questions about the League of Ultimate Questing or how we DM or how the characters are played. Stuff like that. We love those kind of questions. And I hope this is some fun content to help you at your own home game. And until next time, we wish you luck.